Howdy, Mojave D is here. One of his sons is here. We're doing well. We hope you're doing well. And the reason I'm here is we actually have a little bit of a surprise for you, oh or a gift oh um, boy. to celebrate your 40,000 subs. And this was actually mostly all Adam. Adam just did everything for this. He came up with the idea and, and ran with it. And you might know him in the comments section as Adam, <laughs> 1920. And uh, we thought it would be cool to share it with all of you. So you ready to go? Yeah. Go? All right. Here, I'll let you sit down here. Oh, my goodness gracious. Uh, there, is this recording? Yeah. Just. What do I do? Hit play on the... Where's play? It's right there. This? No, no, no. Right there. There you go. Well, hey there, mister. How you doing, Mojave D? Yeah, that's right, cowpoke. Are you kidding me? This is a special cameo, and it's just for you, sir. Do you know why? Why? Well, of course you don't know why yet. I haven't said. Hold your horses, Mojave D. Jeez. <laughs> but to be honest, there's a whole bunch of reasons, but first and foremost, it's because you're all right, boy. At least that's what me and your sons and apparently 40,000 subscribers reckon anyways. <laughs> well, I can't tell you how pleased I am that you're enjoying the work of me and my colleagues. I do. Smoke them if you got them, if you can. And also, get your big head out of here, Mojave D. <laughs> your son told me to say that. I'm sure it means something to you. But listen up. I insist... That you have a fantastic rest of your playthrough on Red Dead Redemption 2. Can't help but yeah, have that's a right. great time. Insist. Because you, sir, are officially awesome. Thank you. So glad you're enjoying so it. So are you. Thanks for your interest, man. It took a village. And the fact that people are still enjoying this after over five years, my gosh, it just makes me want to pinch myself up and down all my arms. You are Genuinely good. black and blue. You are I'm so good. thrilled that you like it. Carry on. Thank you. I'll catch you later then. All right. Keep on loving each other. Keep on loving Red Dead. And you'll be all right. All the best, Mojave D. Take care. Thanks for picking me, guys. Hope you like the message. Oh, and by the way, Linda. <laughs> well, hey there, mister. How you doing? Okay. That was great. You guys. Oh my goodness, how cool, how cool was that? Uh, man, uh, Roger Clark, is that, what a, what an honor. Uh, and my son Adam, uh, thank you so much for that. Thank you, Roger Clark. Uh, that, wow, <laughs> that was, that was, that was pretty dang cool. All right, so what we're going to do here is my son sent me, he emailed me. Let me get into my email because he did send me some questions. And so we're doing a Q&A here. Um, again, this is <laughs> this is set up by them, not by me. So um, I don't even know what the questions are. Uh, but he, he did say that uh, he selected questions that wouldn't be uh, repeats of questions that we, uh, you know, we, we, we covered the last time. Let me get this. Uh, we were playing around with the camera and everything, so it is kind of different right now. I don't think we need that light. Uh, sorry, man. Um, Patrick just left. Uh, you know, he had to set all that up. Anyway, so what we want to do is, is answer these questions. Um, my son picked them out. Adam picked them out. And uh, he tr he wanted to pick things that weren't asked in the, in the previous uh, Q&A. And I don't I don't know why you why you guys would want a q and A. I mean, I, I don't I don't find myself that interesting. Uh, Roger Clark's interesting. This game is interesting. I mean, yeah, you guys are interesting. I just, I absolutely love uh, the comments and, and, and where they come from from all over the world. Um, and Patrick was here, and he's, he's, so everything has been changed as far as the visuals go. I'm trying to get it back. So, question number one from Har Ebs, H A R R E B S. Thank you, Har Ebs, for the question. Now that you've been there, Warma, what else do you think is there? What do you think lurks in the parts of the map you haven't discovered? And what is your favorite state 
region or city in the game so far? Okay, the first part of that. Uh, what else do you think is there? And Warma? Uh, nothing. Uh, we it, it was very small. Uh, we were restricted to the jungle. Couldn't go into the, the place where there were buildings uh, because we got shot to death, right? Because, uh, like, you know, dozens of, uh, of uh, federales show up and kick you out of those buildings. I mean, unless you're really, really good with Deadeye and, and you can take on 30 guys all by yourself, which I am not that good, uh, then, I mean, I don't know how you could even search for anything. So I don't think, I don't know, I, I, I have no thoughts about that. I don't think there's anything there. Um, I, I, you know, um, if we return there, um, I, well, I don't know why we would. Um, I mean, we've got to rescue John. John's in prison, but that's all happening on the on the main map. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know, Harebs. Um, I don't think there's anything there. Um, and what do you think lurks in the parts of the map you haven't discovered? Oh man, I, a lot. A lot. I really, really wish I could, um, you know, sp spend a video or two, or you know, just, just spend hours uh, checking every building um, in in the towns, uh, but not just in the towns. On the road, out in the country, there's so many cabins and um, um, places I haven't looked at. I haven't explored the mountains very much at all. Um, you know, it's been a lot of it's been. Um, you know, advancing the story, um, and because I think that's where the most interest is, is in that, um, and, um, you know, and I, I like it too, but, you know, because I never know what's, what, what's going to happen, it's all very surprising, so um, I think there's a lot, a lot to answer that question that I, I in, in, in the parts of the maps I haven't discovered. And what is your favorite state, region, city in the game so far? Um, um, I really like it around Valentine um, because it's the closest thing uh, to uh, a terrain that I'm familiar with. It's the most the most western like you know it's kind of it's dry it's not it's not all wet and muddy uh you know god i hate i hate those two towns up north is like van horn and annisburg just sloppy muddy wet Ugh. i really like san uh, san denis uh, as far as the towns go it's just spectacular i want man i wish you could go into every single building every single business um and um and it's just spectacular to go through there at night. Uh, it's such a visual joy. So thank you for the question, uh, Harebs. Uh, Helpless Lobster 3987 asks, what moment in Red Dead have you personally connected with most? Wow. Thank you, Helpless Lobster, um, for the question. Uh... I, I, I don't know what you mean by connect with. Um, um, I, 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 there's impact, you know, there, there's, there's things that impact you. Um, I think the, the, that last mission, um, and, and, uh, where you could go to the trolley. The, the trolley car uh, robbery trolley station um, Arthur Arthur's interactions with um, <clears throat> excuse me with Dutch um, where he's really making fun of him you know, like oh does this trolley go to Tahiti you know and then when they when they uh, divvy up the money and they go through all of that and almost get killed and, and shoot up the whole town for $25.25. And, and, he, and he looks at, and he gives them the money, and he goes, oh, here, Dutch, don't forget the 25 cents. I love that kind of stuff. And the, the, the kid outside the stable, when he was there with uh, Mary, and Mary w went inside uh, to talk to her father, and he's out there, and that kid is sweeping. Uh, that whole thing uh, just 
the, the really good acting. As far as me connecting, I don't know. Personally connected. What moment have you personally connected? Um, I, I don't... Um, well, I feel very connected to Arthur, of course. Um, I was very connected to the White Arabian, you know, Caleb Elk, um, a.k.a. Sugar, um, as far as connected, you know, uh, but um, these guys are outlaws, and, they're, and uh, I'm not, so I, I can't connect with them other than um, embodying Arthur as a player playing you know embodying him and playing him uh, but I think I don't know how to answer that because I, I don't I, the word connect is uh, is the problem I'm having personally connected with what moment have you personally connected with the most um, I, I don't know how to the, the word connect uh, impact I mean uh, Sean I was totally unexpected. I, I just, it never occurred to me that any of them would get killed. So Sean was the first one. And that was a big impact. Um, when Kaylee Bell got killed, my prized possession, my horse, um, by that Gatling gun, um, big impact. I don't know, connect, you know. Um, I don't know. Um, you know, big impact. Uh, oh my gosh, Kieran riding in the way he did. Uh, you know, those are huge impacts. Um, but I don't know about connect. Uh, but thank you, Helpless Lobster. Okay, lizard change. Lizard change. How, how much change do lizards give? Um, lizard change. Or what is lizard change? Like they give you um, scales or claws? What I'm being silly. Uh, will we ever get to see and meet Mojave sons in a video? You just met Patrick, and that's the only one you'll probably ever meet. Um, I, I can't. Um, uh, because uh, uh, they, they live, you know, one's in Florida, one's in Hawaii, one's in California. Patrick's here with me in Nevada. He's about 30 miles away. Uh, so probably no. <laughs> Uh, thank you for the uh, the question, Lizard Change. And Lethal Pupper, 4844 asks, favorite place to get pizza and what are you putting on it? Um, and don't have it anymore. It used to be uh, uh, the, a couple of mom and pop places, but uh, they're not there anymore. Uh, I'm not, or I'm not around them. Um, I don't have a favorite chain, um, but at mom and pop places where they make Everything from hand, including the, including the pizza dough. I'll tell you who makes the best pizza. Well, the best pizza I ever had was uh, uh, in Alaska, believe it or not, in Denali, uh, Denali National Park when I was there um, uh, uh, as a GM uh, running a restaurant there. And Chef Wallace, William Wallace, does that name ring a bell? If you're from Scotland, it does. Right, William Wallace. If you watch Braveheart, it does. And Chef William Wallace is, in fact, a direct descendant of the real William Wallace. He is related to him. And I think, I think Chef uh, uh, Chef Wallace's uh, um, father might still live in Scotland. I don't know. But um, Chef Wallace, and he's a real deal. Executive chef over all the operations there in in Denali uh, for. Aramark back then um, he's the real deal chef he's not like a you know um, some people put shit take the title chef and they're not real chefs he's, chef chef William Wallace is a certified genuine real deal executive chef and his recipes for pizza were best I've ever tasted in my life. Now, he didn't make them, but he did all the recipes for all the restaurants, all the food operations uh, there in Denali National Park. And so, of course, he taught the sous chefs and, and the other chefs in the kitchens how to make them, how to prepare those, um, you know, but they were his recipes. And those pizzas, and it didn't matter what you put on it, and were just um, otherworldly, otherworldly good. But I don't have... If I'm going to get a pizza, like from 
you know, the chain stuff, you know, Papa John's or, or Pizza Hut or whatever. I like everything on them, man. I like everything. I, li I like to get the uh, Supreme. So thank you for the question, Lethal Pupper. And then Moon Isium, you sir, UG3F38TW1G, and Hard Ebbs again. Where around the globe have you traveled to? Um, I haven't traveled around the globe. My father, I'm sorry, I got something in my eye. Um, my father traveled around the globe three times. He was uh, he was on board a, uh, hold on a second, something is in my eye. He was on board a ship from World War II when he was 18 years old until he was 27, and he never left that ship all the way from World War II until after World War II, and he went around the world three times uh, in the Navy uh, aboard, well, he was on an aircraft carrier during World War II in the South Pacific, and um, I'm not sure what kind of, uh, he might have stayed on the aircraft carrier that for 10 years. Uh, as far as I, my travels go, it's all been uh, in the West. I've never been to New York. I've never been to Boston. I've never been to Florida. Uh, so it's all West. Uh, the, and I, I've been to Hawaii. I have a sister born in Hawaii. I have a sister born in Alaska. Uh, so I've been to, to both of the states that are not on the mainland. Um, that's it, man. Oh, Tijuana. Um, Tijuana uh, in the 70s, uh, probably about six uh, six or seven trips. And then in the 80s, um, um, with the church, we sponsored uh, a, an orphanage in Tijuana. So we would go down there once a month. And we would, uh, we would um, also bring um, jackets and blankets and, and food. And stuff like that to to pass out to the cliff dwellers there's uh oh my gosh there must be a, a million people that just live in the cliff they just dig out uh holes in the cliff this is back we're going back in the the um, early 80s here and and in the 70s i went uh, more as a tourist uh with my college friends and stuff like that we would go down to tijuana and they have just fantastic uh, outdoor malls where they sell all of their handmade um, blankets and serapes and uh, hats and pottery and um, just all kinds of things, rugs. It was it was a really really uh, cool experience. But that's it. That, the only time I've been out of the country would be to Mexico to Tijuana. Okay, and let me get my glasses back on now. I don't know what was in my eye, but it, I think it's out now. So thank you, Munisium. For the question, the Royal the Royal 99 asks, if you could time travel back to any historical time besides the Wild West era, what would it be and why? Oh, wow. Uh, it would be... Uh, if I could go knowing what I know now... <laughs> You know, or do I have to go and just know what the people of that time knew? Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, if I could go uh, with the knowledge that I have of, of being, you know, in this time back, um, that makes a difference. I don't know, man. I, I, never, I don't know. Um, uh because you, you you took the wild west out, you took <laughs> you took out what you you eliminated that as an option. Uh, I, I I I think I would I think it would be Nazareth, man. Back in the back in the time when uh, when Jesus was uh, was walking, you know I, you know think about it, think about it. The, the opportunity to be able to walk and talk with with God, really. Uh, I think, yeah, that would be it, and that's why. Okay. Um, thank you, Royal99, for the question. El Chino6181 asks, as a real cowboy, what are your biggest pet peeves? Okay. I've never been a cowboy. I've never done any cowboy, all right? I had horses and a donkey and some chickens, and I was around horses and, and, and that lifestyle. But I, I've never been a cowboy. Uh, I've never done any cowboy. I can ride. I can. I can. I know how to handle a horse. I know how. I know how to 
you know, I, I practice some roping and I, you know, I'm, it's stuff like that. Um, but, um, um, my pet peeves are, uh, watching the NPCs mount on the right of a horse. That bothers me. You don't mount on the right unless you're in a certain situation where you can't mount from the left. Cleaning a loaded pistol with your finger on the trigger. Arthur, where's he? Arthur, you're going to blow a hole in your leg. You're going to blow your kneecap off. He's cleaning his pistol, a loaded pistol, and he's got his finger on the trigger. That bothers the heck out of me, <laughs> you know. Um, also, uh, the second cinch. Almost every saddle here has a back cinch on it. You don't need a back cinch, you know, unless you're roping cows or, or doing something where the back cinch on the saddle. So you get, they, they, get, they have two cinches. One is up front, right, behind its front legs, right, under the shoulder there. And the other one is on the other side of the belly, the back side of the belly. That one on the back, the only purpose for that is to hold the saddle down so it doesn't pop up on you. Like, for example, if you were if you rope something and you're pulling and you're pulling or, or dragging, you're pulling or dragging something, and you, you don't want the back, you don't want your, the back of the saddle to come up on you. That's the only purpose for that. Well, these guys aren't doing any of that, so they don't really need a back cinch. <laughs> a minor, minor pet peeve, no big deal. Um, uh, inaccuracies from the game. Pet peeves and accuracies from the game. Uh, well, um, that kind of thing. Um, as far as, um, I'll tell you what, if, if I could do it again, let's go back to that previous question. If I could go back in time, I would go back to when I graduated high school. Let's do that one, Royal 99. Um, let's go back to Royal 99's question. And instead of going to college, I would have gone off and, and, and signed on at a ranch somewhere and become a wrangler. Um, that's, that's, if I had a do-over, that's what I would do. Um, because I love that lifestyle. It's not a job. It's a lifestyle. And I love it. Everything about it. It's hard. Uh, and, and you got to be tough. But I love it. Um, I, that's what I would do. I've done a little bit of that, but not much. Uh, you know, a cowboy, a cowboy has to be part part wrangler and part packer um but but modern day cowboys you think of modern day cowboy basically they deal with cows modern day wranglers deal with horses and they pack people well packers will take uh tourists you know city folk that want to have a western experience they'll take them back in the woods and back in the mountains you know uh on, on camping trips uh maybe fishing uh wrangler and, and maybe hunting you know they're packing back um, um, hunters, fishermen, and uh, city slickers who just want to have a Western experience. Uh, that's a packer. Uh, wranglers uh, deal with horses. Everything to do with horses. Now, uh, a cowboy, the old-time cowboys, was, was all three rolled in one. I don't think you have that today, but as much. Certainly, wranglers are going to work with cows a little bit. Uh, packers probably never do. You know, packers are... Um, different but those three things I would I would like to go back in time to answer the previous question to right after I graduated high school and sign on at a ranch and become a wrangler there you go okay and in after okay did I answer your question El Chino as a real cowboy <laughs> we've answered that uh peeves and accuracies um like I say I, I think I answered you thank you very much El Chino uh non-negotiable asks how come they're <laughs> <laughs> there are plane sounds flying so low to the ground. Uh, I live about 11, uh, probably 11 miles uh, from the international airport here in Las Vegas. Uh, so it's not them. It's not the big jets. What you're hearing is there's a private airport about six miles from here uh, where people who can afford airplanes um, keep their keep their airplanes. At, at, uh, it's a private airport. And so those are uh, private individuals. And a lot of them, you hear that a lot on the weekends because they go out uh, on the weekends and they get in their plane and they fly them. And a lot of those planes are old prop jobs, you know, they're propeller driven. And uh, it, they're pretty cool. It's pretty cool. And that's that they take off and land about six miles from here. So does that answer your question? Non-negotiable. Mr. Chicken Man asks, what has been your favorite mission? Wow. And part of the game and why? Wow. Um, the very, 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 very beginning. Because um, 
it, it was all brand new, like completely fresh. Everything didn't even know how to get on a horse. And it was so well done, and it was so, it just draws you in, you know, like a really good movie. <clears throat> you know, they're they're starving. They've got they've got wounded and dying. They had the after the Blackwater massacre, that and they're 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 in extreme weather. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, that whole thing, that the, the, the beginning, and then uh, this last one, um, the bank. Oh my gosh, you know, you know, we lose Jose, uh, you know, but you can't, you can't dwell on that because you you're in a firefight, and then you hear that John gets captured, but you can't dwell on that because you're in a firefight, uh, and then. Poor Lenny, Lenny gets gunned down right in front of you, but you can't dwell on that because you're in a firefight. And then the extremely exciting shipwreck and then the, the um, um, exquisite beauty of the island that they got marooned on. Um, I, I mean, off the top of my head, I mean, there's other missions that I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed, but I, I would have to say... Those the very beginning, and then what just happened, and then and, and getting to Guarma, and, Guarma, and getting off of Guarma. Um, wow, all of that uh, big impact. Uh, so thank you, Mr. Chicken Man, Walt Chamberlain. <laughs> Ask what, Wilt Chamberlain. What, what another subject? What's your all-time favorite gun? Yeah, you know, again, this is really hard. I mean, um, if you, um, if I was to to start collecting, uh, I would go with uh, with relics, and just um, um, you know, guns from the eighteen hundreds, seventeen hundreds, flintlocks and stuff like that. The old historical guns, in good shape. Any any one of that that's in that's in really good shape. If you're talking like right now. Um, if I were to go out and, and buy a rifle right now, um, and it would be the, uh, you know, it'd be a semi-auto, uh, 308. So that was Walt. Uh, thank you very much. But that doesn't make that my favorite. I mean, um, I, I have a friend who has a gun collection and he's got, you know, over a hundred and uh, he's got Derringers that are just really cool, you know, <laughs> really cool. And, and I really like them. All right. Um, and he's got lots of other old, old guns. Anyway, okay. Uh, Kakwin, K-A-Q-Y-N. What is your all-time favorite fictional character from any form of media? What is your all-time favorite fictional character from any form of media? Character fictional all-time favorite fictional character. Uh, it looks like you, uh, you asked it twice. Same question. Wow, that is hard. Uh, Arthur's got to be up there. I mean, what a character. What a great one. Um, of course, I like, I like Westerns. So um, um, Augustus, Augustus McCall in um, a Lonesome Dove. What a great, great character. Um, uh, wow, that's, you know, I, that, that requires thought. I'd have to like think, think back. Um, um, I really, really liked, uh, the original Spider-Man, uh, comic books. I started reading, um, Spider-Man. I was probably 10, um, years old, maybe 11. I don't know. I was probably 10, uh, with, with issue number three. And I bought every Spider-Man from three through 80, um, I think they came out once a month, but the original way that Spider-Man was written, he was so cool. His lie, he was funny. It was a first, you know, it was just a, a funny superhero, a superhero with uh, sarcastic humor. So I really, I really liked uh, that Spider-Man. You know, the, the the first issues, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You know, probably up. You know, and then he started getting strange. Um, but I like that uh, fictional character. I, I again, I'd have to give that some thought because there's there's characters in, in movies and in books.
that I would have I would have to really sit down and think and go oh yeah that guy that that character um, oh you know a character I really like is Mike Hammer um, uh, from the books who wrote the uh, Mickey Spillane Mickey Spillane wrote the Mike Hammer series and I really like the character of Mike Hammer okay thank you for the question uh, Kaquin uh, Jack Daniels 9292 off the top of your head if you had to say what state was each character from based on the characteristics sound and accent Wow uh, that's really hard um, because uh, accents uh, change uh, over time you know um, uh, Texans don't sound today like they sounded in the 1800s and the only Texans I know of are today's Texans so if any of these guys are supposed to sound like a Texan it would be kind of hard to tell um, I don't think any of them do I think Arthur sounds kind of maybe maybe Georgia maybe Missouri or Mississippi um, kind of um, and of course Roger Clark Wow what a <laughs> what a great surprise Adam that was so great I, and thank you Roger Clark thank you so much um, uh, he, he, he I heard an Irish accent when he broke away from doing the I, I gotta look him up and see um, um, but I'm not allowed to because I gotta stay blind so I'm not allowed to look at any of this stuff but it's not it sounded like he had an Irish accent in there when he broke away from um, doing Arthur's voice so wow very very impressive that he does such a great job with the southern accent but I would say Arthur Southwest you know Hosea um, more Eastern um, but again um, you know I have friends uh, from Tennessee and North Carolina like personal friends people that I have worked with and talked to uh, you know and hear their accents and uh, a, a Tennessee accent from today doesn't sound like a Tennessee accent from the 1800s uh, you know so I don't know um, I don't think um, so I don't think I can do it I mean none of them sound like uh, Micah the actor for Micah the actor I mean well they all do such a great job my gosh all of them but Micah does a really really good job the actor for Micah with that accent um, but again I can't I, I couldn't place it um, to a state um, I couldn't do it um, anyway um, thank you for the question though Jack Daniels that's a tough question all of them obviously southern not all of them Hosea East um, Dutch East um, Molly's easy Ireland <laughs> great accent okay uh, thanks for the question uh, Jack Daniels 9292 uh, Josh and J-A-H-S-C-N-V-I-V asks, is the 50,000 sub <laughs> hot tub stream still on the table? Ah, oh, dude, you really want to see a 70-year-old man in a hot tub? I'll tell you what, um, to celebrate 50,000 subs, it would be really cool from one standpoint uh, the jacuzzi in the backyard because I'm up on a hill and it looks out over the valley the Las Vegas Valley all the way down to the strip um, it's spectacular it's a million dollar view at night uh, when all the lights on the Las Vegas Strip are lit up you know and you got that globe the new globe is down there and that's lit up which I think is tacky as hell I hate that thing but it's down there and it's lit up um, and um, but the view the view would be spectacular and and that I think would be enjoyable seeing a 70 year old man in his jacuzzi would not be enjoyable guys what do you want to do that for <laughs> we'll think of something else um, 
uh, Sanan, S-A-N-A-N, Kadri. Will you ever consider playing other games like Red Dead 2? Example, um, like God of War. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Um, yes, definitely. Uh, thank you for the question, uh, St. Anne Caudry. Uh, and I intend to. Uh, not necessarily the ones you mentioned, but I intend to keep going. And I, I really don't want this one to end. I just, I, I, I want to live in this one forever. I, I, I love it. Okay, the Emperor Lord Frieza and Bored, very bored. <laughs> Great handle. What were your thoughts on Jose and Lenny's deaths? You don't have time. You don't have time. Um, you know, you, they're shock. You know, you're, they're shock. And you know, there's, oh, no. Oh, no. You know, especially, you know, uh, the way both of them got, went down. I mean, not as bad as what happened to Kieran. But I don't mean, you know, that way. That way was shocking and a horrific way. This was... Uh, the way they went down in cold blood without even having a chance to, uh, you know, with Hosea anyway. I mean, uh, that Pinkerton, what's his name, Milton, just shot him in cold blood. Just shot him in cold blood, you know, right in the street. Um, and so both characters, now there's a big hole, um, you know, at camp. And, and with the interactions and everything, there's a big hole that I feel with the absence of Hosea and Lenny. Um, they leave a big hole, man. And uh, Lenny was I, all I, I you know, I, um, I couldn't draw because you're in a cutscene and you you couldn't draw your your pistols in time to to stop the two guys from shooting him. He couldn't even get his his own gun out to defend himself. And then you couldn't pick him up, you know. I had to leave him behind, and that really, you know, that bothers me, you know. And so it, it troubles you, but you don't have time to dwell on it. Because everything else that's going on, it's that whole thing. And I said that's my best, my favorite mission because it's so well constructed to take you on this uh, roller coaster ride. You know, it's just spectacular. But yeah, um, never expected Hosea to get shot. Uh, after Sean, I didn't expect any of them to ever get shot. When Sean got shot, then okay, now anybody, now okay, now I'm aware that any of them could go down. Um, yeah. Thanks for the question, guys. Uh, Ronan24 asks, what are your favorite movies of all time? Oh, my gosh. Uh, that requires a whole lot of thought. That's I would have to see a list of movies. Oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot about that one, that movie. Favorite movies of all time. Uh, it wasn't a movie. It was a, a mini series. Uh, Is Lonesome Dove. I mean, that pops to my mind right away because that's the most recent. Um, thoroughly enjoyed uh, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kids. We're into westerns here, um, uh, but uh, in non, uh, the, the, I know there's non-western ones that I love. I just can't, I can't think of them. Um, um, the first time I saw Star Wars, I saw Star Wars, and it had just opened. The theater wasn't even full. This is the very first movie. The theater wasn't even full. You guys. Um, it, it wasn't like super promoted, you know, the word of mouth spread like wildfire and, um, Star Wars, the very, very first film, uh, is the only movie or the first movie I ever saw more than once. And I was blown away by, by Star Wars because everything was so, um, cutting edge and, and state of the art for the time that that came out. And it, it was just wow. And I, I told my friends about it. And and I brought like three or four of my friends to come and see. We got to go watch this movie. And the line was a block long. There was a block long line to get in. So, I, you know, that one. Um, other ones that come to mind. Uh, movie um, Love Casablanca. Um, I, 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 again, I'd have to see a list. And then, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. That was, oh, um, Lawrence of Arabia. Oof, great movie. Um, anyway, okay, let's get on with this. Um, thank you, Ronan. Um, Yare Noglu, uh, Yare Noglu, uh, Y-A-R-E-N-O-G-L-U. Sorry for mangling your name. Um, what do you think about how the game portrays this semi-fictional version of America? <coughs> Well, it's a game, 
and they've got to make it entertaining. Um, so you can't you can't mix uh, uh, an opinion about reality with with fiction. Uh, if they're you know if they were trying to to come off as uh, being historical uh, and portraying things historical and, and factual, um, you, you know, then then you could make those criticisms about it, but they're not. It's 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 all fiction. It's all made up, and so you can't say, well, that's not the way it was. That it didn't really happen like that. These things didn't really happen. Well, duh. It's not you know they're not trying to say it is, it did or it is. They're trying to be entertaining. Um, so I don't think, I don't think you can go, go into that, you know. Um, thank you for the question, uh, Yaren Oglu. Um, Chelsea Barron, 8494, concerning side characters in the game, ones that haven't gotten much screen time, which is your favorite and why? Man, I wish they all had more screen time. Um, Charles is my favorite, and the reason is because of what, um, Arthur said about him when he, in his journal, he said he just naturally knows what's right. He just, he naturally does the right thing. It comes natural to Charles. Um, I would really like to have a lot more interaction with Charles and see a lot more. And then Sadie, uh, because she is just a very, very um, colorful and uh, charismatic uh, character. Thank you for the question, um, Ch Chelsea, Chelsea Barron. Uh, Chibi Kawai 3 asks, do you have grandchildren? Yes, I have six. Six grandchildren. Thank you for asking. Um, Jen Rambo. This may be a random question, but as I recall from your previous videos, you've told stories of how you've had many jobs. Yeah, you know. <laughs> in the past, including uh, in the trades, so like carpentry and welder. As a young lad trying to choose which trade occupation to learn hmm, between appliance repairer and electrician. Okay, so he, you're trying to choose between appliance and Okay, so my questions are, which of the two job do you recommend? If I'm employed in one of these jobs, how can I be smart with the money I earn? And are trade jobs worth it for many years? Absolutely worth it. Oh my gosh, we need you. We need people like you. I'm sorry, let me go up to your handle. Jen Rambo. Rambo, we need people like you so desperately. Um, this world would be a much better place if we had more men with dirty fingernails and clean minds than the way it is now, the other way around. You know, um, uh, dirty fingernails and clean minds, Megan. We need more of that. Um, yes, um, and God bless you. Um, you know, um, well, I don't know how to answer that. I mean, because, um, I, I, I mean, how can I say what is better between uh, an appliance repair man or an electrician? Um Either way you go, uh, Rambo, and I think you should go with what you're best at, which one of those two things you're naturally better at, uh, go for being an independent contractor and not an employee. Okay, that would be my advice. Don't just work for some company as an appliance repairman and you're fi fixing people's refrigerators and washing machines and dishwashers and, and that sort of thing for a boss. If you go that route, be an independent contractor. If you go the other route, electrician, same thing. Now you would have to work obviously for someone uh, to learn, you know, and, and move up the ranks, journeyman, master. Um, but as I think the goal or the best path for either one of those is for you to set a goal and, and be motivated and driven to become an independent contractor for that so that you choose who your customers are. 
You choose what jobs you take and how much you make. You choose. Do you understand what I'm saying? And then as far as the best way to manage your money uh, and, and, and save it, um, yeah, uh, that's a really long conversation, <laughs> you know, that's a long conversation, um, and I, I, here, I, I'll give you, an, I'll give you a couple of examples, though, um, a good friend of mine from high school, who, um, I've mentioned before in, in, in a couple of stories, uh, Al, Al Comer, um, his nickname is Alley Cat, never went to college, he was talented with wood, as a woodworker. Now, he went to work in construction. He didn't go to college, so he didn't accrue or, or obtain or accumulate any kind of debt that way. He, he worked as a carpenter, worked his way up to being a master carpenter, became a general contractor, was a millionaire before he was 30. Okay, before he was 30, he was a general contractor. He built three of the Lowe's uh, department stores, hardware stores, right here in the Las Vegas area. Three of those, he built them. He built many fast food restaurants in this valley. And, uh, and he did a lot of work on, on subdivisions. Um, but when me and a lot of my friends we're getting out of college, you know, somewhere around 24, 25 years old, and we had debt. We owed, right? We got a loan. We had loans to pay off. He was already a millionaire. So uh, just maybe a little motivation there for you. And he didn't have any college loans to pay off. So good on you for wanting to go into the trades. Good for you, uh, Rambo. And... Um, Either way, you any path you pick on that, though, I mean, just uh, my advice is um, keep your eye on and work towards becoming an independent contractor to where you pick the customer, you pick the job, and, 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 and get out from um, being an employee for somebody as soon as you can. Okay. Thank you for the question, Ram uh, Rambo, and God bless you. Um, Jay Lemmy, exactly two months and over 40,000 subscribers after the first episode of Red Dead Redemption 2. Actually, it was less than two months. Um, <laughs> you guys did that. You guys are awesome. Uh, how has it all impacted Mojave D and how does it make you feel on the whole journey so far? It has impacted me by um, making me younger. All right? It, because... Uh, a lot more endorphins are flowing in my body because I'm happy a lot of the time. A lot more, I have a lot more uh, minutes and hours of being happy every day than I did before. And that makes you younger. So thank you, uh, Jay Lemmy. And thank every single one of you. That is the last question that my son sent to me. I think these things are really boring I don't know why you guys would want to do a Q&A, but there it is. I hope, I hope it, I don't know, I don't even know how to say, I hope you enjoyed it. i tell you what was enjoyable was, um, was uh, the gift that Adam gave me, Roger Clark. Oh my goodness gracious, that was awesome. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, uh, appreciate you so much, and uh, we'll see you on the next one, which I'm going to get started on here real quick. Take care.